morning. We're all here. I'm here to talk about the why. Why are we here? Well, they say that money rules the world. And we're here today in the world's oldest stock exchange. Um, can't thank Euronext enough for letting us host this. We're here to talk about financial disruption all day today, so hopefully that's okay. Um, you know, it seems like we got, seems like we were, we were able to host this event and talk about how everything's going to get disrupted. So it's a really good thing. You know, why are we here today? We're talking about access. It's, 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 it's part of the name of why we named this gathering access. It's to drive access across the board. Um, we developed a mission statement last year when we hosted our very first edition of Access. While many conferences focus on information network or public blockchain security, Access Summit brings together digital asset industry leaders in the intersection of business, technology, risk, and security. Join us as we cut through the hype and complexity to spotlight actionable strategies for protecting your digital asset initiatives and leveraging distributed ledgers securely. And that's the purpose of this event is to be value add to everybody in this room, to be able to actually get a intimate group together. Um, you know, we, we hard capped this strategically at 100 people. We want to get the best and brightest together to meet, to talk about the most important aspects of the space. It was only 2008 when the Bitcoin white paper was released. Since then, there's been a whole new wave of innovation going on around blockchain technology, distributed ledgers. And at the end of the day, where this is now going to, from, since 2008, this is now going to where in the next 15 years, almost all of capital, almost all of markets is going to be tokenized, digitized, and you know, many of you in this room, you're used to hearing a lot of these stats. Over $16 trillion of value is going to be tokenized in the very near tangible future. So what we talk about here in this room today, it's just completely going to be um, disrupting and taking over a lot of what goes on in legacy systems. In fact, as of today, 39% of all financial institutions are implementing DLT. I found that statistic particularly interesting because I feel like a lot of us, you know, um, you know we, we decided to host this event, piggybacking off of Money 2020, walking around that event. You hear about crypto a lot. You hear about distributed ledgers a lot. This statistic actually surprised me a lot because you think about all the financial institutions of the world, you think all of them have digital asset initiatives. In fact, it's only 39% still today. Um, and I think that's very, very telling as to still how early we are in this next stage of innovation. And my last stat to go off of is that spending on blockchain, so forget about all the hype, all the speculative aspect, spending on blockchain and implementing blockchain initiatives is going to be increasing to $34 billion just in the next two to three years. So it's pretty incredible. And so that is why we are here today to talk about all the things that distributed ledgers can create. I'm talking about um, financial innovation, inclusion. There's still 1.7 billion people in the world that are completely unbanked. This technology enables people's lives to be better. And so all day, every day, we get to come together, talk about these innovations. So, you know, again, like the reason why we're here is to talk about how we're transforming these markets. Um, and that's why, you know, as the CEO and leader over at Halborn, all day, every day, we get to focus on the implementation of all of this new technology, all this new innovation, and at the absolute pinnacle, the, the absolute center of it all is security and risk. Um, 
if you talk about the world of DeFi for a second, decentralized finance, last year alone, $3.8 billion was stolen from market participants. So all of us that are working in public markets, private markets, you know, proper financial institutions, those bad actors are focused on this space as well. It's just as ripe for that kind of uh, nonsense, I would say. And that's what we're here to do and, and enable this securely. You're going to hear us talk a lot about DLT um, and the whys. You talk about efficiencies, security, cost reduction, innovation. Uh, turns out that financial institutions that have already implemented DLT, whether they're POCs or well beyond POCs actually working, transaction, transacting billions. In fact, we know for a fact that there's organizations tra transacting trillions using DLT technology today. They will tell you of major cost reductions. What does cost reduction lead to? It leads to better consumer outcomes. It leads to cheaper opportunities for financial in inclusion. And ultimately, I think what a lot of consumers and the general, just everyday person thinks about the financial industry, they, they think about its opaqueness. They think about how it's not really all that transparent. This technology enables that um, as a feature, you know, not so much as a bug, right? And so the whys just continue to stack up. Um, we're going to be able to, with implementing this technology, you're going to be able to um, automate your risk management, you're going to be able to automate regulatory compliance, you're going to be able to automate uh, liquidity improvement, and market competitiveness is a big thing too. Um, innovation leads to better outcomes for your business. This kind of innovation leads to you being above your competitor. You know, all day, every day, um, you're going to be talking with your board, you're going to be talking with your managers, you're going to be talking about ways to beat competitor XYZ, this is a way to do it. This is a major, major way to do it. And we're here today in Europe, obviously, right? And so what's going on in Europe is absolutely incredible, such as we have Mika. You're going to hear about Mika a lot. You're going to hear about Dora a lot. Um, Mika establishes a regulatory framework for the issuance, offering, and trading of crypto assets across, across EU. Um, what I found really interesting about Mika and the statistic here is that this framework, while it's being implemented now, and look, it'll likely, as we all know, it'll likely take a couple years for this framework to start being implemented um, in a lot of different countries, it already represents one-fifth of all of you know, financial services. Um, it, yeah, it's one fifth of the global economy is about to have a regulated digital asset framework. These things tend to snowball, right? It's only this year in 2024 that we, you know, in the US, for example, we have the, the Bitcoin ETF that was approved. Many other ETFs and ETNs are being approved across the world. This is just the beginning, and that's what's exceptionally exciting about all of this. Um, and then you have Dora. Dora is a framework establishing uh, comprehensive uh, operational resiliency, um, and it's mostly for you know ICT-related uh, disruptions and threats to be kind of focused in on. And what that means is that there's going to be 22,000 financial entities across the EU um, that now has a new framework to think through risk and think through all the cyber risks that go on in the space. And so ultimately, we've come together to talk uh, about all the problems, all the solutions going on in the space. So, you know, uh, right after this, we're going to have a panel on shaping the future of finance with DLT. Um, we're really excited about a number of different talks that we've been working hard over at Halborn to establish just really the best curated group of individuals to come and talk about these topics with you. Uh, so please be on the lookout for, for a lot of this. Ultimately, we thank you for coming. Nice and bright, I know. You know, <laughs> we want you all to wake up here. So, um, you know, 
we want to thank you for coming. It's a Friday. You're all tired. Um, we couldn't thank you enough for, for coming here. So um, thank you again and excited for the talks today. Thank you.